Hey everyone, it's Selena here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create uh, some centerpiece sticks or um, cupcake toppers. You can practically use this for a lot of things, but this is the example picture that was um, posted in Facebook. And she wanted to know how to get the inside um, for print and cut. So this is something that can be designed in Design Space, and um, it's just by having all, all of your elements and using Flatten for print and cut. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and I've already grabbed um, some shapes and some things just to kind of get us started, and then I'll show you how to do it. Um, in this example, uh, I, I could tell which font that was and it's a font that I already have and I downloaded it from defont.com and it's called a gentle touch and so if you wanted to use that that's the name of the font now over here I have this purple cupcake I changed the canvas color um, but this is by using your set canvas and this is just to kind of give you an idea if you did want to do a cupcake topper then you can kind of sh uh, you know, have a visual on what's going to fit well for a cake, cupcake topper. So if I were to look at the diameter of the biggest circle or the scallop circle, this is going to be almost 2 inches, so 1.83 in width. And um, But if you wanted to use this for centerpiece sticks, then I would use, I would make it bigger. All right, so these shapes I grabbed from Cricut Design Space, in, and I just used images that are in the subscription. If you do not have the subscription, you can easily get these shapes from Google just by searching a scallop circle, and you can see there's different ones that you can use there, and you would just save the image and upload um, into Design Space. So for these that I have, I went into insert image and I just started typing scallop circle and I can filter it for only the subscribed ones to show so I'm going to use this little filter here and click on subscription. So the one that I used is this one here. This is from the Elegant Edges cartridge, and it's um, called Circle Scallop Doily Label. So let's go ahead. Oops, I accidentally clicked on the um, cartridge itself. So let me find that. And this shows free. All of this shows that it's free. So. I don't know if Elegant Edges is a normal cartridge that's free for all um, Design Space users, but you might want to check that out because they have quite a bit of stuff in here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And it has two layers. Actually, it has three layers. One of them is hidden. So you can use... Let's ungroup this. You can use um, the back one, the middle one, just depending on how you want that scallop to look. All right, so I'm going to get rid of that back one because all I need is this one here. So I'm using this one as the back scallop. And what I did is I just duplicated it and then I changed the color to gold. And that's going to be, and I'm just going to drag the corner just to make it a little bit smaller. That's going to be this second one here. So this one I'm going to cut in pink cardstock. This one I'm going to cut in glitter cardstock, gold. All right. So then we need this part here, and this is the main part of, this is the reason for the video. So you want to, um, you're looking for how to get those, that design, that look. Um, it looks like a sticker. Um, I personally wouldn't put a sticker on top of glitter cardstock just because it might fall off. I would glue it 
I would use a, you know, like a light cardstock and glue it on top of the glitter cardstock. Um, so what I did was I inserted a shape and I just inserted a circle. Okay, and then just size it to where it's gonna fit right in the middle, but not overlap that scallop. I'm just trying to mimic my example here. So I'm going to change the color to white. You could change the color to pink, to a very, very light pink, whatever you're looking for. Now for these little dots that are around here, I can go to Google and I can do, I can even type up, let's see, dot circle. And this is a good one here or this is a good one here. So you can use any of these um, and you would just clean it up in design space just by deleting the background and you can use that. But what I did here was you see that this scallop has circles around here. It's actually a cutout. What I can do is I can use contour and I'm going to click on the inside which is going to get rid of the entire scallop. It's just going to leave these circles behind. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to click right off of it. And now it leaves me with the circles. So I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller and bring it to the front. And just size it to where it's right where you need it to be, like that. And that's how I got those circles here. Then I'm going to insert a text line for the number one. And for this example, this looks like um, Times New Roman. So I'm going to change the font. So I've changed that. Now in the example, this number one is not gold glitter cardstock. It's actually a filled pattern. And they used like a gold glitter background or um, pattern fill for that. You can easily just cut this out of glitter paper and put that on top. I think that would look a lot prettier. But if you wanted to do it just like the picture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my layers panel, I'm going to click on the number one, I'm going to go to print. When you click on print, it's automatically going to change it to a flat uh, printable image. But right over here, you can either change the colors or you can click on patterns. Now I already have um, a pattern that looks like glitter or gold. It actually looks like a gold foil. So I'm going to use that as the example. But it, when you click on this, it's going to tell you applying a pattern to the text converts it to an image. So once I do that, I'm unable to edit this. I can't change it to number two or change anything about it. I had to have to do another um, add text. So just click continue. Now I already have, I've already been messing with this, but it'll automatically default if you haven't messed with anything to everything that is in. Let's unclick that. It's going to default to all the patterns that are in Design Space, whether that's in your subscription or anything that you need to pay for. But because I have a pattern uploaded already, I'm going to click on my uploaded patterns, and there's this gold foil. So I'm going to click on that, and you're going to see here that this is going to change to the gold foil. Okay, now it looks really tiny. You can't really see the foiled look. So what you can do is go back, go into edit. Right here, this is a scale. So I can increase this and you can see that it's changing a little bit bigger so you can see the more of the foil. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, then you can size it accordingly. All right, and now the little stars, all I did was I went back into Insert Images, 
and I searched for star and I just clicked on this one I like this one because the edges are rounded this one has several layers so we're gonna get rid of the ones we don't need so right over here I'm gonna just hide the cloud and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it I'm gonna use hide contour but I'm going to show you that when I click on contour, it's going to tell me that it's not available for composite images. All I need to do is ungroup it, and now I can go back to contour. So I'm going to hide one of them. Do the same for this one, ungroup, and then contour. Hide the other one. Put those there. This one has a lot more going on. It looks like little polka dots or my, maybe like little tiny stars. That's also like a pattern fill. So if I had that, what I would do is I would do a pattern fill for the circle itself. If you wanted like little speckles or, you know, a fill of tiny stars like this instead of adding, you know, 30 stars you can do a pattern fill that's up to you but once you have everything the way you need it to be I'm gonna just place everything there I'm gonna select it all and I'm just dragging my mouse across the entire area and you could just check in your layers panel to make sure all of the layers that you need are highlighted. And I'm going to click on flatten. Once it's flattened, this is a printable image. So you can either print this on sticker paper or cardstock. And it's going to cut around that. It's going to print on your home printer and then cut with the Explore. And I just did the same thing for this one. actually do it on this one. I just um, change the text. Now you can see that in design space when you type text your spacing is going to be off. It's always spaced. So what I did was I'm going to change the color first. Change it to a darker pink. I'm going to ungroup and then I'm just going to scoot the letters together. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. And I just want it to look connected. So I'm just scooching these together. Okay, I'm going to drag a box around it, make sure that they're all selected, and I'm going to click Weld. Okay, now that name is welded together. I'm going to place it where I need it. Now I'm going to highlight the circle, the scallop, and the name, and I'm going to flatten. And now that will print and then cut. Okay, so I went over several steps in here. One was hide contour. Hide contour is used for images that have um, different pieces that you want to hide. Like for the example, the star had two stars, I hid one. For the scallop circle, I hid the scallop to keep the little bitty circles. Or you can click each circle. I mean, it's not necessary because you already have one. But if I were to click each little circle and then click off of it, then it would be a solid scallop circle. Um, I used weld so that everything could flow together, weld it all together. I used Pattern Fill, which is found on your layer. When you change to print, you can um, choose a pattern fill. And whenever you're doing your own patterns and not using the one in Design Space, to do that, you would click on Upload Images. There's so many patterns that you can find. If I did like a tribal pattern, I mean, any of these will work. 
okay, you can pretty much upload any image as a pattern fill. But instead of using upload image, you're going to use pattern fill. So you would just upload using this, and you won't see it down here. It's going to be stored in your um, patterns when you click on the layer and then click on the patterns right here. And then you'll just filter it. You can scroll for it, but you can filter it and then look for it that way under uploaded. All right, what else? Oh, and then we did flatten. So flattening things together is going to make everything print. Um, I do have to say that, let's say, we look for a circle and not use the insert image. Let's say I use this one here. I could tell right away that this is just an outline of a circle. Okay. Let's add some text. Let's say we wanted this word to print inside of this circle. Okay, so I'm going to select the two and I'm going to flatten. Whenever you're ready to print, it's going to print just fine. Actually, it's not going to print just fine. It's going to print very blurry. So let's go, I'm going to get rid of this. Let's go to print. Okay, so you can see all my print images look pretty good, except for this one. Why does this one look so blurry? The reason being is the circle that I'm using is empty on the inside. So if it's empty on the inside, and it's it's basically not the hello part is not flattened to anything so what the software thinks is that you want to print out everything but that you want it to cut out around each letter and that is the reason for the bleed okay so if I undo my if I let's do this again let's duplicate this and then we're going to change okay here we go unflatten okay if I did hide contour and I clicked on the middle now there's a the background let's change this color so we could see all right, now I'm going to select the two and flatten. You're going to see that this is still, um, that has that bleed, but this one is legible. And like I said, it's because this is hollow. You can see my grid lines behind it. There's nothing there that it's actually flattened to, so it's going to cut out each letter. So just be sure when you're you're flattening things, uh, make sure that you have something behind it, because if not, it's going to cut out separately. So I hope that makes sense. All right, so if you have any questions, I really wanted to um, cut this out and uh, get it on camera and you know assemble everything together but it is really late and um, I don't have time for that but I wanted to get this video out to you um, but if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below if you learned anything in this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see new videos thanks and see you in the next video